Hello everyone, my name is Molly Marr and I'm joined by an incredible panel of scientists from across the state of Oregon. Here with me today is Novella Bates, a PhD candidate at Oregon Health and Science University. She studies potential therapeutic targets for treating medical device-induced thrombosis, which is pathologic blood clotting on the surface of the device. We also have Ian Morell. He grew up in Corvallis, Oregon. He attended Gonzaga University, where he received an honors bachelor's of science in civil engineering. He continued on to complete a master's of science in civil engineering at Washington State University. He's since been back in Corvallis, Oregon, completing a doctoral program at Oregon State University, studying both wood science and civil engineering. Finally, we have May Sonko, a PhD candidate at the University of Oregon. She's part of the Institute of Neuroscience, and her research aims to determine cell types in the octopus visual system. Her project is designed to probe the idea of foundational key elements of visual processing by investigating molecular markers of these similar looking cells. I wanna thank you all for being here today. I'm really excited to talk with you. This past year, everyone has been talking about science. It's been discussed at length on television, radio, Twitter, from breakthroughs to debates. We've all been hearing about science as it relates to the pandemic. But science across disciplines continues, with hiccups due to supply shortages, transitions to virtual workspaces, and public health mandates. I'm interested to hear from each of you. How are you navigating science during a global pandemic? Let's hear from Novella first. Thank you, Molly. You bring up a good point, and we've all been experiencing the same challenges over the last year. Um, I got really lucky, and I was very fortunate um, when we first went into lockdown in 2020. I just finished collecting a huge data set, and I was finishing up quite a few experiments, and so I was going into analysis mode and getting ready to start writing up um, my methods and the results as well. And so I spent several months uh, in that analysis mode as well as writing the manuscript. Um, and then there was a very long transition back into the lab space. And um, a lot of my colleagues were sort of in and out of lab throughout that time. And my lab was tasked with uh, coming up with regulations for return to lab. And so that was, I was leading that project as well. And so navigating, transitioning out of writing into being in charge of coming up with regulations for our floor um, and best practices in terms of spacing and remaining distant and uh, getting lab work done efficiently was quite a challenge as well. And uh, additionally, my work is very dependent on human donors. So I collect blood from humans for most of my experiments. Um, and this is all volunteer based. And before the pandemic, it was quite easy to find folks on the floor who were willing to donate for experiments. However, that has been an additional challenge over the last year and a half, but we have been chugging along and things have been going as well as possible. Great, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate hearing about the transitions and I'm relieved that you weren't interrupted too much because I know that a lot of people really faced challenges with getting their science done. Ian, I'd love to hear about your experiences and yeah, no worries. I we were outside of the initial portion of the pandemic. Pretty fortunate, at least in uh, kind of civil engineering and wood science, since we work in large lab spaces. And so, at least in terms of physically being in the space, it kind of is inherently social distanced. You know, you're in a large kind of hangar area, and there's like five of you. It kind of actually less than that. Um, I mean, outside of right when the pandemic hit, I was just about to collect a lot of data, and so that was kind of a poor timing. But I'd say like the biggest delays were just that usually we have a large amount of uh, undergrads or people around our lab just because if you're building, you know, a 10 foot floor, you don't want to do that alone. <laughs> it's a lot easier if you don't do that. Um, but a lot of it, it's it's getting done what you can when you can and understanding that progress doesn't have to be exactly what you planned for it two years ago for it to be progress. And I think 
that's a big thing I think that kind of happened during the pandemic. Pandemic was kind of understanding like, hey, this isn't going to look like what we thought it was. This next year is not going to be you know what we planned back in 2019. I feel like that's a core aspect of graduate school in and of itself, is doing experiments and realizing that things aren't working out the way you think they're going to work out, or the project's not going the way you think it's going to, and now we're doing something completely different. And, you know, we're all sort of learning that in addition to navigating uh, a pandemic. So I think it's a really great point that you've highlighted. I'd love to hear from May about her experiences as well. Yeah, so um, like both Novella and Ian, we're kind of in a position where we can transition to some remote work. Um, I realize though, I, I work with Octopus, that's like really hard to connect back to human health. And it felt selfish to just be thinking about what is the octopus brain doing? Like, what are we finding in here when it feels like the world is falling apart? What are some aspects of my project that I can relate back to humans or community, anything that helps all of us feel a little more sane, especially during a global pandemic. Um, And a lot of what I realized is since we're looking at the diversity of cell types in the octopus visual system, um, I started to focus in a lot on that diversity aspect and trying to highlight how even though I'm working with a model system that is hard to relate back to human health, there is this aspect that I think a lot of people can relate to. Um, How can we have this complex organism or this high functioning animal without the diversity of cell types that are in their brain? Um, So I've focused a lot of my energy on just building, um, working towards diversity in my program and in my department and specifically on how we can highlight how Diversity, equity, and inclusion can over can ultimately lead to more people feeling like they belong and like having a sense of community, especially in grad school when, um, like you were mentioning, experiments fail, <laughs> projects don't go the way that they're supposed to during those really really hard moments when you realize, oh my gosh, I still have like three or four years of this. <laughs> It's nice to know that there are people around that have gone through similar things or people that you can connect to. So even though navigating science during a global pandemic has been very difficult, it has allowed me to think about my project and the impact of my research on other levels that I I don't think I would have had the time to really reflect on when you're just go, go, go in the lab working on experiments, trying to get the project done. So I am fortunate for that side of, or that effect of navigating science and the pandemic. You bring up a lot of really important points. I think that everyone was struggling to find community this past year and to, to imagine what that was going to look like in a really different environment where we weren't in person, we couldn't walk down to borrow lab supplies from our, our neighbor, we, couldn't, we didn't have the hallway chats that sort of lead to collaborations and happen unexpectedly. And I know that that was a really big change. I also think that many of us felt in, you know, called almost to engage in equity work seeing what was going on this year. And so I'm really glad that you brought that forward. And I also wanted to, to just highlight that concern that you, you led with about science not necessarily leading directly to human health. I think that's, that's sometimes a shared concern. But, and, and I think it's gotten lost this year to some extent, right? There's been such a focus on, on the medical sciences that we have, have talked less about the basic sciences, that we've talked less about advances in astronomy and, and other areas as well. It's, it's sort of lost some of the focus it used to have. But we know that all sciences contribute and we may not know what that contribution is going to look like, but there, all science is a gift to humanity. I really appreciate and- that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I wanted to open it up and see if anyone had any last comments or reflections based on what they've heard from the other panelists. I did just want to make a a comment about creating community over the last year and a half, because that is something that I didn't speak about, but has been really important. And I feel like it has, the last year has highlighted the need for community and science and 
being a part of the ERCS community has been, it, it's been life changing. And it's difficult to say that because I don't know what grad school would be like without ERCS. Um, but I've had the opportunity to connect with other folks in my department who I would have not otherwise, I probably wouldn't have met them. Um, and, and there's some accountability in terms of checking in, but even, even larger, um, I had the opportunity to connect with students from Oregon State University, as well as the University of Oregon. And I got to know my Oregon community in a greater sense. Um, so it really has been such a supportive environment and community of students. I had some arts members and stuff just check in on me like, hey, how's how things going? You like, you doing okay? Everything? And that was that was just really nice. I'm really, really thankful for having kind of arcs as, a, as an extra support system there. I want to thank you all for joining us today. I've really enjoyed talking with you and I appreciate the breadth of conversation, talking about desire for equity, transitioning our science to in, in very different ways, dealing with changes in terms of undergrads being there or not being there and the ups and downs of graduate school and really finding ways to continue to develop professionally, gaining new skills in scientific communication and thinking about how regulations could apply to science and can be adapted with others, with input from others. And I feel like we, we came back to this theme of community, which really ran through everything we were talking about today. And I, I feel like that's a wonderful thing to highlight at this time, as, as we've all often felt pretty isolated. So thank you all for joining us. It was wonderful speaking with you today, and I look forward to hearing more about your exciting scientific endeavors and progress in the future.